Oh, hmm, how could I forget? Pixel 10 GPU drivers, the updates. I benchmark my Pixel 10. Well, check this out. I actually used my wife's Pixel 10 Pro. My Pixel 10 Pro is on the stock firmware. Hers is on beta. <laughs> so I said, I need, I need to borrow your Pixel real quick. So I have screenshots for the performance of this new Pixel 10 Pro with the new GPU drivers. This is the one we were all waiting for. And uh, we now have the benchmark numbers. And did it improve any? Is, did it get any closer to the S25 series, S25 Ultra? And for shits and giggles, I benchmarked the OnePlus 15. You're going to laugh at how big of a difference there is between the OnePlus 15 and the Pixel 10 Pro. Now, let me preface this by saying I'm not shitting on Google. I know it may seem like that, but I just mentioned I'm part of the Pixel super fan, super fans group. I'm, I guess, officially, well, I guess unofficially now, hashtag Team Pixel since they did away with hashtag Team Pixel. I still consider myself hashtag Team Pixel, right? I'm a big supporter of Google and the Pixel devices. They're one of the best Android phones, or phones, period, you can buy. So just because it doesn't get close to performance-wise, like on benchmarks as as it to the OnePlus 15, because there is a mountain of difference. It's, it's laughable how much difference there is. Um, it may seem like I'm shitting on them. I'm not, right? Does it, do, do these benchmark numbers affect how you use your phone on a daily basis no right i mean it is what and i've got i've uh, look i've gotten so used to shooting content on the pixel and then transferring it to the samsung or i guess now transferring it to the oneplus 15 that it's really not that big of a deal right like yes and look you can edit videos on a pixel you can game but is it as good as a OnePlus 15? No, and that's just a fact, and that's okay, right? Like, I'm okay with that. Pixel is meant to be your all-round. I like to compare phones to cars. I know how weird or corny that sounds, but it's basically a good comparison because you have different classes of cars, right? Different types of people buy certain kinds of cars, right? So I look at the like the OnePlus 15 like as a Ferrari, right like a ferrari i think of the s25 ultra as like uh escalade or a a truck it's a workhorse your s25 ultra it's a nice workhorse maybe it's a cadillac escalade truck remember do they still make escalade trucks i don't think they do do you y'all remember those oh i used to be in love with those things i wanted one so bad never had never had one um but it's like an escalade truck right it's an all-rounder it's your workhorse um but it's very nice and sleek now look at the pixel the pixel device uh y'all may y'all might want to help me out but as far as a pixel you compare it to a car maybe it's a uh, sedan right or I'm trying to compare i really haven't maybe a lexus right yeah lexus is probably a good one where it's it's not the fastest car out there, right? But it sure is the smoothest, right? It's dependable. It's, Lexus is probably a good comparison. Uh, it just works, right? Now, if you want to go fast, you can jump in your Ferrari or your OnePlus 15. You need a workhorse. You're going to be using it all day. You jump in your Cadillac uh, Escalade truck. But if you're going to a uh, dinner night in a, in a movie with uh, your wife or a date, take the take the lexus the pixel it's probably a good comparison but um nothing wrong with that i'm just simply showing uh the gpu drivers and what you know what performance gains they they have uh got right so uh totally get where you're coming from in regards to the gap between pixels and one plus brand yes and it depends on the buyer right again like cars there's something for everyone right so if you just want flat out speed a badass uh, just something you know the one plus is the way to go right if you're talking about top line performance right if you want to go fast if you're in love with speed get you a ferrari get you a brand new corvette get you a um a one plus 15 if you're a workhorse you work online you're right like i do you're 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 always on the go you can run you run a business from your phone or you do a little bit of everything right a little gaming a little content 
a uh, little little video editing here, picture editing here and there. Uh, Samsung's what you can't can't beat that, right? With the Samsung, or if you just want something nice and smooth, dependable, you get your updates every month, uh, and you just want to kind of cruise. That Lexus, that Pixel is for you. So. Uh, I don't know. Oh, and here's the thing too with cars, right? This is my last comparison and we'll move on. But it's like, I always get called out for doing benchmarks, right? So whenever I do a benchmark video, somebody always says, oh, benchmarks don't matter. It's it's so overblown, this and that. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but I'm just putting out the content, right? Like, like and, I, and, and again, think of it as cars, right? So the benchmark numbers don't mean everything but do they mean something? Yes. Now, talking about a Ferrari, Ferrari zero to 60, or you do the quarter mile, right? That's the benchmark for speed, right? Quarter mile and zero to 60. Well, with the Pixel, we we know it's not the fastest thing out there, right? And with the Ferrari, if you go zero to 60, and let's just say three seconds flat, or you run like a 12 or 11 second quarter mile, like you're not gonna be driving zero. You're not gonna smash your foot on the gas at every red light. Whenever it turns green, you're not gonna be going zero to 60 every single time you put your foot on the pedal. Well, it's just like the benchmarks. We're not gonna be, we're not gonna be trying to go as fast as possible every time we use the phone, no. But it is a, it is a number, it is a standard um, that's measured, a benchmark, right? And it just tells people what it's capable of, not necessarily how it drives on a day-to-day -day basis or not necessarily, you know, how it behaves when you're using certain apps. Pixel can handle almost every single app, right? And smooth, very smooth. And actually this December update I probably won't get into it today, but they did tweak the kernel and it does feel snappy. It does feel very fast, very snappy, just doing normal day-to-day -day tasks. I, I should have saved the article. I read an article last, what was it? No, maybe this weekend where it went into specifics on how the Google developers tweaked the kernel. It, if you're saying, damn, my pixel actually feels a little snappier after this December update. It is, it is snappier. They actually tweak stuff to make it a little more snappier flying through the operating system. So uh, again, I'm not shitting on Google. I'm not shitting on Pixel. Uh, I'll, I'll always have a Pixel until the day I die. <laughs> well, you know, unless there's some unforeseen stuff that goes on, but I'm always gonna buy a Pixel every year. It's just, it's just a, they make a very, very dependable phone. A Camry, <laughs> yeah, could be, right? I mean, Camry's a Toyota, Alexis is Toyota, so very dependable. So check these numbers out. So we're gonna get into the Google Pixel GPU drivers update. Did it affect and or increase the GPU benchmarks on the Pixel 10 Pro series? Let's find out. So here is, let's get into the numbers before. This is before the update, right? So here's the Google Pixel 10 Pro GPU benchmark. Uh, this is just after the release of the device a few months ago, right? So the OpenCL GPU benchmark in the Pixel 10 Pro is 3235. And the GPU benchmark of the Vulkan score was 3704. So you have, that was Vulkan. So 3704 Vulkan and 3235 for the OpenCL. This is using Geekbench 6, right? So uh, let's get into the OpenCL GPU benchmark after the driver update, the GPU driver update. Now, this is only available in the beta series. So if you're running on stable firmware, don't rush to install the beta software because the, the latest beta software on the Google Pixel series, guess what? Banking apps don't work. So, well, at least ours doesn't. <laughs> so don't rush to install this. Google released it on the beta, the driver, GPU driver update, and they're going to package it into the January update for the stable build, right? So if you're on stable build, hang tight. The, the driver update is coming next month, which is not that far away, well, a couple weeks, right? So let's get into the open CL GPU benchmark score after the update. 
you get 4,010 points. So it roughly went up, what, 800, basically 800, whoops, that's not the right one. So that's OpenCL before the GPU driver update, and that's OpenCL after the GPU uh, driver update. So roughly, I don't know, 800 points, something like that, right? My phone's going crazy. Uh, let me turn this the notifications off. Okay, now let's look at the Vulkan. So that's OpenCL. Let's look at the Vulkan GPU driver update scores. 4,000. So this one's 410, this one's 4,000, right? And you, that's coming up from 3235 and 3700. So did it increase these scores so that you have an overview of the gpu yes was it drastic no but i guess any little bit helps right did it increase yes was it drastic no but at least google is staying on top of this right and they can push more updates and i'm sure they will in the future now will it dra ever drastically increase Google developers are working with Immortals, uh, the company Immortals that, that makes this GPU. Um, I'm sure it'll gradually get better as time goes on. And Google is very, very good. You have seven years of updates. Google just doesn't forget about you whenever they release a new phone. So if you have like the Pixel 10 and the Pixel 11 comes out, it's not like they just forget about you and kick you to the curb. They have developers in teams and each team specifically is for each device throughout the life of that device. So there's a team of developers that are specifically, that all they do is work on Pixel 10 stuff. Even when the new Pixel 11 comes out, the Pixel 10 developers stay on the Pixel 10, right? And they do this stuff behind the scenes, update drivers, update this, update that, kernels, blah, 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 blah. So um, they're working on it, right? So, I mean, nothing to brag about, but they're working on it, right? Um, let me show you what the OnePlus 15 does. <laughs> I, I benchmarked it. After I saw this, I was like, wow. I mean, again, is it updated? Yes. Is it faster? Yes. But I was like, let me do the OnePlus 15. I, I could guess I need to do a video on it. But look at these scores, right? Check this out. So let's do the... Here's the, since we're talking about GPUs, let me show you the GPU scores. So the Pixel basically got 4,000 points, right? Basically on Vulkan and CL, OpenCL. Now here's the OnePlus 15. Can y'all see that? The Vulkan is on, uh, excuse me, the OpenCL is on the bottom. Let me see if I can make it bigger. The OpenCL is on the bottom and the Vulkan is on top. The OpenCL got a score of 22,000, almost 23,000 points, while the Pixel had 4,000. And the Vulkan GPU benchmark got 28,000 points, while Pixel got 4,010. <laughs> so you see, you, you see the difference there. And it may not be a fair comparison, but look. They're each company's flagship device right now as we speak. So that's it's one of its competitors blowing them away. But it is what it is. Um, let's look at the CPU scores. So the CPU scores that I got on my OnePlus 15. Now this is running Oxygen OS 16.0.2 in this model number CPH 2745. We got a 3424 for the single core. Pretty freaking freaking fast. And then over 10,000 points in the multi-core score. 10,000 points. This thing, um, fastest Android phone. Actually, I think the multi-core score beats the Apple iPhone 17 Pro Max. But I think the 17 Pro Max beats the OnePlus 15 in single-core score, I believe. 